Hello everyone, this is Diane. I am going to do kind of a schizophrenic video today, I think, because I'm doing, very unusual for me, I am doing two um, different journals at the same time, but I'm going to be putting this one aside for now, but I want to show you what I've gotten done so far on it. This was just supposed to be a weekend project and then put it away for work on again next weekend, because this one uh, is not supposed to go in my shop. I think I'm going to keep this one, but if I change my mind and I'm willing to let it go, I will certainly let you know. But um, I did an introductory video with this, about this one already, just a very short video the other day. And I actually published it the same time as the flea market haul got published on Tuesday, and I did not mean to do that. This was supposed to be Wednesday's video, but anyway. Um, it got published at the same time as the flea market video, so I hope you were able to watch both of them. Um, sometimes if I do two in one day, the first one doesn't get watched very much. So I just wanted to show you what I've gotten done on it so far. So it's called The Professionals, Curious Illustrations from Mrs. Cog's Crafts. And I pulled it out to use in conjunction with these, well, I printed it to use in conjunction with these really fun pages from a children's book that have the same idea. So this is a gardener, and his clothing is all made up of uh, vegetation and fruits and vegetables. And in the background, you can see the beautiful gardens that he has worked on. And he's carrying the tools of his trade and a watering can. And here we have, uh, it's a, it was a book of the alphabet, and each alphabet was represented by a person, each letter I mean, was represented by a person wearing uh, an entire wardrobe of things made up of the word that went with that letter. That was a lot of words <laughs> for that sentence. So obviously F is for flowers, so this lady is wearing flowers. G is for gloves, so this lady is wearing gloves. All, I mean, not just gloves on her hands, but all over. So I thought it was fun to put these things together. So I have done some work on it. Uh, obviously, you can see I've put it on a Reader's Digest cover with burgundy and gold design, and I put burgundy and gold trim on it, and just a little bit of collage, some pretty ribbon back there. I haven't finished the inside of it yet. Um, and I took... There are three sizes of these images. Um, there's five, four pages. So there's one large image on each of the four pages. So the cover and each of the three signatures got one of the large images. And then I'll show you what I'm doing with the smaller images. The front cover of each one has a ledger page behind the image. Um, so that can be the ledger where they keep track of their orders and customers and income and outgo and all that stuff. And then I put, I sewed the uh, image to the ledger and then did a little bit of a collage. So this is the goldsmith. And I took this rectangular piece of this gold lattice and I cut all four corners off <clears throat> so I can use them in collage on all four of these large images. And um, then I added some gold foil and this little gold necklace piece on there. And I will be making a card to tuck in there. For the other ones, I sewed the image to the to the ledger and then sewed the ledger so that the the bigger piece, the ledger piece makes the pocket so I have a bigger card in here. This one is the wine grower and I stamped a bunch of grapes on lavender vellum and then color colored them in with um, inks. And there's a textured embossed paper there that I colored with inks and then I added some purple buttons to represent the grapes. So <clears throat> there's a wine grower and there's a wine maker. So this one is the guy growing the grapes. It's pretty cool. And there's a card in there that I haven't done anything with. And then this one, here we come to the reason why I stopped work on this journal because look at the stitches there. My sewing machine started 
not stitching right, I'm going to take all these stitches out and do it again. But I had to take my machine to the little quilt shop where I bought it, and hopefully, I took it yesterday, and I'm hoping to hear from her today, or I don't know. She said there was one machine ahead of me, so I'm hoping it won't take too long. But in the meantime, I'm doing other things that don't require my sewing machine. So this one is the tailor. You can see he has a table around his waist where he can actually cut his materials. And so for this one, I have the gold corner again and a cloth measuring tape that I can put on there. And this bit of embossed cardstock, white cardstock that I inked up. And then just this little die cut with an image on it which I thought looked nice with the theme, the style of these papers. And that will just be a collage on here. But I can't do it until I can fix that and sew it on there properly. Another thing that I did, oh, let me, I was going to show you the smaller cards. What I'm going to do with them is I'm going to put two on a page. So these are the two sizes. So I have a bigger one and a smaller one. I'll put them on the page like that, and then I chopped off some coffee dyed tags that will just get tucked into there. And um, I think that I will try to embellish the tags with something that will match the image. This is the Glass and Lens Merchant. So I'm going to try to use one of my glass optical lenses, optician's lenses, some here, somewhere here. I don't know where. I don't think I can attach it to the tag because it would be too bulky. But I want to do something with it. I'll see if I can. But I can put an image on here of glass, a glass piece. And this is the tinsmith. So those will be sewn on there once I get my sewing machine back. And that's about all. I have uh, two pages that will have the two pockets and then there's an extra pocket so one will just have one pocket on there. This is the locksmith so I've been pulling images I've got some collected here that I can use to represent some of those goods. Um, I cut out this gold cup for the goldsmith but I might be able to use, I don't know if I can use any of those or not. But we've got some glass jars, which I could use for the glass merchant. More glass. I've got lots of glass. I've got some clocks. I don't remember if there's a clock maker. I think maybe on the children's book pages there might be some clocks, but I don't remember. And I don't have all of the pages of that book. I do not know the name of the book. I do not know the illustrator because I bought the, that book several years ago and I sold some of the pages to one of my customers. It's also one of my friends who asked if she could have some. So I, I'm just using what's left of the pages and I probably have used some in journals here and there. But I have enough for making a whole book with that theme, so that's really cool. So anyway, I don't. I think there was a clock, and I don't know if I still have it. So I have clocks and weather vanes, which could maybe go for the iron worker. And it's also, these are iron. And uh, these might be tin. So there's a tin smith. More clocks, lamps. There's a lamp guy. I think, I hope these are silver. I don't know if there's a silver smith in there or not, but I just pulled a bunch of things that might work. I know that there's a, in the children's pages, there's a, a musical instrument person. More glass. There's a tool maker. And so there's some nails here. He's got a hammer. I don't know. There's some spoons. There's a utensil maker. <coughs> So I'm hoping some of these will work. And I have jewelry, but I don't think there's a jewelry worker, jewelry maker, which there should be, shouldn't there? We'll see. See what I find. But I also have stamps that I can use to create some images for these things. What I was going to do right now was just try to create a little card 
for the goldsmith. So I have some embossing ink here. And this is just some script from a Tim Holtz stamp set. didn't stamp it on there straight, but that's just for background. long time. It's not melted. What's wrong with this? Must be it took the gun a long time to heat up. I've had that for many years when I first first started stamping when my kids were still living at home still in school and then I have this little tin cup that I can add there but I'm gonna put a little paint around the edges of this card paint. I'll have to let that paint dry. Um, need something else too. Let's try that.
then I'll put a tab of some sort on there and it will slip into that little pocket. But I can make more tags and cards with the pieces that I've that I've got out. But like I said, this was supposed to be a weekend project. So I'm going to set this one aside. I've got my little bag here that I can store everything in. And I won't tuck this in until the paint is dry. So now this is what I'm working on for this week. Seahorse. Let's see, does this need to go down a little? Sorry. Okay, so I'm working on Seahorse. And I took the pages out and I actually cut the pages because the pages were, the illustrations on the page were small, like contained and framed. Um, so I thought it, the best use of them would be to cut them out and use them rather than try to fold the page in half and just have a little bit of a seahorse on one half and the other half, a little bit on the other half of the page, you know. So I have three signatures and I'm just going to go through the supplies I'm going to use. Um, you guys said that you like it when I show my supplies. So I, I had done this video once, but I'm not going to go into detail. It's, I'm, I'm not going to use that video. So I'm just going to show you my supplies. When I did the first video, I didn't even have the pages cut or anything. I have a, a paper kit, page kit from Stampin' Up! called, I think it's called Sand and Sea but I'm not sure because I might be getting it mixed up with this digital kit, which is called Sand and Sea. I'm not sure if they're called the same thing. But it is from Stampin' Up! and it has images of seashells and things like that and then watery looking backs on the pages. I folded this one inside out. And then I have this kit from Liana Scraps because um, she has some seahorses on this paper. And I am going to make another journal with a seashell theme. So I, I use some of the of this kit, which is called Sand and Sea, I think, um, from Liana Scraps. I'm going to use some of them in this book and some in the seashell book. I took all the seahorse images out for this book. And she has a couple of different lined pages to print on the backs. I have this paper that I painted a while back for another journal and I had extra pages so I put them in this journal. I have this seahorse stamp. I have some papers that are 8x8 that I got on clearance recently at Hobby Lobby and I took out all the images that would work for um, this journal. So as you can see there's some seahorses on it. I have this stencil I think somebody sent this to me in a happy mail. Either that or I picked it up at a, at a flea market because I know I got some of these round ones in a happy mail and I know I got some at the flea market. So I don't know which is which. But anyway, it's all seashells. So I did those with some other pattern on it. And I'm using some straw paper. You can see here some of the other elements I have to use which are these dies, which is, the set is called Sea Life, and it is from Stampin' Up! Comes with a seahorse, the fish, the coral, and these two little fish. I had painted some papers with inks, and then die cut some of those images. Also from Stampin' Up! And it was in one of their little pumpkin I forgot what I forgot the name of it, but it, they they're little boxes. There, it's a monthly subscription that you can get, and the paper pumpkin. That's what it is. And I I think I got a three month subscription one time just to try it out. And there was one kit that had a bunch of sea stuff. So these little glittery starfish and sand dollars are part of that. 
and these seaweed pieces are part of that. So I've got this whole baggie. I had to punch them out. There's this medallion that's on vellum. Looks like coral. And then this, I had to punch out all of the, I think these are supposed to be coral also. So I might color these coral things with alcohol inks or sprays or something. Or there's enough of them I can experiment anyway. Okay, what else do I have that I'm using? Here's the other lined page that she has. I just have some scrapbook paper that I used. Here's another of those 8x8 sheets and just a lined paper. And of course, this came from a children's book. So I'm going to put a mat around it and use that as a pocket on the front. And these are from this mermaid or seahorse sea book. I think I've talked about everything that's everything I needed to talk about. Look at that gorgeous seahorse image. Okay, other elements that I'm going to use. Let's see what's here. We already talked about this stuff. I've got some phrases cut from the book. And this came from a children's book. And a seahorse dictionary definition. I can cut some more images um, with my dies and some more words cut from the book some more of those sparkly little embellishments and then I also have some charms so I have seahorses and starfish there's a stingray the stamp. This is a stampability stamp from Hobby Lobby. I don't know if it's still available. Um, I got some batik fabric in a Happy Mail recently and some of the colors are going to be great in these journals. So they look watery or sandy. So I just brought them all, got them all out. See which ones I want to use. I have this i um, not sure where I got that. don't remember because I've had it for a long time. I was going to use it for mermaid journals, which I probably will because there's 18 feet on there. That's a lot. And then I also, for trims, have these pieces. I may have gotten these in a Happy Mail. When I colored the papers that I used for the die cuts, I also colored some white seam binding. So I have those. Got a lot of images that I cut from the book. Really nice images of seahorses, other sea life. This came from a different book. And these came from that Stampin' Up! paper pumpkin kit. Some envelopes and little note cards so I can embellish these and tuck them in. Here's a couple of the die cuts that are done and I pulled these from a little field guide on the seashore. There, There is a page, uh, those little seahorses, this seahorse and his mate start out in um, Sargassum and so they're brown to match the sargassum. And then they travel and they end up, I just have different pages with sea 
seagrass and seaweed and stuff. They end up in um, eelgrass, which in the book it says it's black, but this is shown as green. So maybe it's different in different different waters because the, the brown seahorses had to turn black to match the eelgrass <clears throat> when they joined a whole bunch of other black seahorses that were in with the eelgrass. Of course, the seahorses that I'm dyeing are not black or brown. So I've got these pages from a field guide to use. And I have um, this piece of fabric that I used once upon a time in a mermaid journal. So it's got seaweeds and shells. I think, oh, I've got one more thing to show you. I did not want to put lace. I couldn't think of any lace to put on the edges that I would like for this uh, theme. So what I decided to do was I have these papers that are tea bag material. Someone sent me these sheets of tea bag material and I cut off these chunks and I just sprayed them with different colors. So what I'm going to do is cut a strip and then ruffle it up and put that on the edges of some of the pages instead of lace. So that's what I have. That's what I'm working on now. Um, and I can't do what I some of it because I, I need to wait for my sewing machine again. So I can do things like make some more of the die cuts and make some ephemera with some of the pieces that I have. And you could see what I started doing in, in this signature with the stamping and the stenciling and making a little decorate, decorative page here on the um, straw paper. I only have one sheet of straw paper in this journal. The other ones have handmade paper in two different shades. I guess I did stenciling on all the signatures. So let's see, what can we do right now? Let's cut some of this and see how it looks as a ruffle. try to even up this edge just a little bit. I don't care if it's a little crooked. I just don't want it to be too jagged. I'll need the sewing machine to ruffle it, but I just want to see how it'll look. it up. Let's see what kind of page we'll put it on. Maybe on this plain page you can just bunch it up and have some of it hanging off the edge like that. I think that'll look nice. This reminds me of a dryer sheet. these I can use for collages or something if I want to do that. I'll set these down by where my sewing machine will end up. Okay, now I can make some 
fabric down there too. Maybe I'll make some journal cards and whatnot. This one I'm probably not going to use because I didn't have a shim in there so it didn't cut all the way through and well these are poking out pretty well. Some of them I don't think are cut enough that I can even poke them out. Well maybe I can. Well good. I won't do that while you watch though. What will I do with these? I think I would like to just just put these in a pocket so you can have them. I'm not sure. I guess I'll trim the edges, but I don't need to. Now, let's make some journal cards with these guys. There are three like this because it was showing <coughs> the story was showing how he started to move his the fin on his back and then it moved faster and then it moved very fast to propel him through the water. And I just thought these were so cute for like a little bookmarky type of tag and I can put one in each signature. I have this paper here that looks kind of marbly and I thought that was pretty so I, I don't I don't want this but I thought I could use this to back things with. So I think maybe I will rub some ink color on these, on this, so then I can, yeah, I'll have room to back all three of them with that. Let's use the glues. I have Salty Ocean here. This is the parchment paper I used when I was spraying. Well, I don't need to edge it particularly because it's just going to be cut. I just don't want a solid mass of blue. I thought this looked like it could be water, especially if I add these colors to it. Looks like I was trying out a background stamp, a, book a bookshelf when I, I bought that at a yard sale. And I have salvage patina. from the blues. Yeah, I guess so. You can distinguish it. These colors were all out from when I did the stenciling. all oxides. So I'm going to try spraying it and see what happens. Maybe I won't like the results. Let's see if we'll get these oxides to mix together. It looked pretty before I sprayed it, so I hope I didn't ruin it.
It muted the colors down for sure. I miss my colors. just glue these. Yeah, I don't think I will um, sew these. I'll just glue them on. And I don't know what else I'll do to it, but it's got the, bait, the background on it now. Another thing I can do before my sewing machine comes back is make the cover. So I might do that before I quit for the day. those so I can use those in something but got the beginnings of three beautiful tags all right so that just brings you up to speed with what I'm doing on two different journals and it kind of drives me crazy to try to do two different things at once so the other one will stay put away until this seahorse journal is done. Maybe even till I finish the seashell journal so I can get all of this sea stuff taken care of. 
So I thank you for watching today. I hope you didn't mind me switching gears right in the middle of the video. And I hope you're intrigued by the beginnings of both of these journals and that you're interested in seeing the rest. I think this is such an adorable little book. It is Seahorse by Robert A. Morris, pictures by Arnold Lobel, and it says, A Science I Can Read Book. If you wanted to look it up on Amazon or eBay or something. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a creative day today, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.